Shalom family. So I want to just make you think a little bit today. Um, if we go back into church history, Yesubius writes, he's one of the early church fathers. He writes that Emperor Nero commanded Paul to be beheaded. So Paul died. He was martyred for his faith by being beheaded. They placed that more or less just after Rome burned. And he was obviously the emperor blaming the Christians for this. So Paul could have been caught up in all of that and martyred in the process. So head cut off for his faith by Nero at that time frame. And just before this, he's nearing the end of his ministry. He's having these troubles and difficult times, these tribulations come upon him. And he recognizes that he would die before the rapture. He's taught on the rapture. He's <clears throat> eagerly anticipated the rapture. Regardless, <clears throat> sorry, he writes that Jesus would give to him this reward because of his love for Jesus appearing. Uh, we're referring to 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. But I want to read to you from verse 6 and just really bring this home for you nicely. Verse 6 to 8 says the following. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. He knows he's going to die. The sentence is passed. It's, it's happening. He's being poured out. His departure time is at hand. He can see it coming. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. These are the three primary things in his mind as he approaches his execution. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. That should be our focus. Not look how terrible it is. The Lord has not delivered me from this situation. Look at these bad things that happen. I am in prison. They're going to kill. Victory. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Because he can see the end of his race. I have kept the faith. Nothing shakes my faith. Verse 8. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So all, like Paul, who have loved his appearing, that have eagerly looked for and anticipated his return, the rapture of the saints and the gathering together of us to our Lord, all of them will receive that crown. And he's not depressed or sad that he is not going to experience the rapture. He realizes at this point that he is going to miss the rapture and go earlier. And still, he is happy. He has kept the faith. He has finished his race. He knows he walks with God. And so there's a worship song that we sing in church, as you might know it, but a small part of that song, and I sang it just the other day, and, and the little piece in that song says, Till he returns, all calls me home. Here, in the power of Christ, I will stand. And, and that's, that's my feeling, and that's my life. I eagerly anticipate the gathering together of the saints at any moment, especially with the prophetic landscape before us and everything we see all the time happening. We are on the verge of going. But should he call me home before then? That's also fine. Here, in the power of Christ, until the moment that I am with him, I will stand. I will believe his promises. I will believe that he will see me through, that he is running this race with me, that he has got me, and I will walk and I will keep the faith. He is almost here to fetch his bride. It is so close. We can taste it. We can hear it. We can feel it. But regardless of anything that comes over our past, regardless of even if we can see the end standing right in front of us for us individually, 
We have fought the good fight. We've finished the race. We've kept the faith. We will soon be in the arms of our Lord and Savior. So always be excited. Always love his appearing. Like Paul. Shalom.